I'm back at the GTEC Training Centre in the Yorkshire Dales. In a previous video, we joined the team as they were embarking on a refurbishment process of this 12-year-old solar panel installation, fitting some optimizers, changing the strings, adding inverters and storage. Well, the installation's been in for a few months now. We're going to catch up with Griff to see what's been learned. So, Griff, we're back in the engine room. I see the uh, scaffolding is still outside. Scaffolding's still up and, and it's still raining. Whenever I come in, it seems to be raining. The rig seems to be pretty impressive. It's had a bit of a makeover. Um, so what have we got on here now? Yeah, thank you very much. So um, our teams work very hard. Um, essentially, we've got two systems working in parallel here. So we've got a hybrid inverter and then a stack of batteries here next to it and exactly the same on this side a hybrid inverter and then a stack of batteries lining up there from the hybrid inverter we've got the solar inputs here which now go to the reduced number of strings we talked about okay. previously so that was six strings and that's now down, down to, four. to four so we've got two strings going into this inverter and two strings going into to this inverter. So what capacity batteries have we added? 13.8 kilowatt hours. That's in each stack. Yeah. Yep. So, so we've now got 27.6 kilowatt hours of storage. Please do the maths on that one, Griff. Check it before check it. this goes out. <laughs> we will check it, we'll check it. <laughs> so why have you gone through this process? What, have you, what, what do you do this for? So as we said in the, the first episode, we were really keen after having the system in for about 12 years to get some battery storage on it. And because I really like data and wanted to see what each module was doing as well, we decided to combine a sort of entire upgrade to be able to then have the battery storage and module uh, level optimization which means we can also monitor each module's performance. So you haven't done it for shading, it is just to satisfy your curiosity That's right. yes. uh, for data. Yeah. And obviously the battery storage, to, so you're not exporting all that, uh, all that. Well, no, you're on feed-in tariff, so it doesn't matter if you export it or not. So you're trying to maximise self-consumption. That's right. There were some articles in the press recently. We, we believe going forwards that most energy companies are actually going to move on to metered export instead of deemed. Right. Um, so again, it made sense for us to be a little bit ahead of that curve and, and try and conserve as much of that energy as as we could. Okay, so you're on, you were on, well, you're still on the feed-in tariff. Still on the feed-in tariff. Adding storage, does it alter the feed-in tariff? It, it won't alter the unit rate, but you've got to be really, really careful how you design the system. What they don't want you to do with energy storage, as, as you might imagine, is to be bringing in AC energy from the grid, bringing it in through the inverter and storing it in the batteries, then for the batteries to discharge back the other way and start clocking your feed-in tariff meter so it looks like you're producing more solar energy than, than you actually are. All right, double dipping on double the feed-in tariff. Yeah, so you're still earning, you'll still earn the same money on your feed-in we'll tariff. We'll still earn the same money on the feed-in tariff, which, as we know, doesn't actually pay you for feeding. Yeah. It's the, the energy that's actually generated. Uh, what we're able to do, though, now is maximise our self-consumption. Now, when we did that conversion, um, it's really important if anybody's considering to do, to do this, you need to get into the detail of how the systems are set up and what's right for the customer. Um, but we decided to go on to a net metering basis. So these little MID certified meters here actually register the amount of energy that both goes in in AC energy to the inverter and all of that that comes back and taking one from the other will give us the amount of solar energy that's actually been generated. Okay, sensible approach. So what number have you got up to on the self-consumption so far? So we're currently, we've probably had it up and running for about six weeks now, and we're sat at around 82% on average, which is fantastic. Out of our entire con um, system uh, demand from, from the building, we've typically been bringing in about 4 to 10% a day as well from the grid. So we're very, very close. We think given the time of year, once we get 12 months out, we've probably got the right amount of storage for the right amount of solar PV that's on the roof, which I'd have been disappointed about if I hadn't worked that out right. <laughs> yeah, and bear in mind, yeah, it has rained continuously almost ever since he put that scaffolding up there. Nearly. We did have yeah. a very sunny day on September the 14th, but we, we, we don't talk about that. That's thrown the, that's thrown the numbers out. But that's pretty impressive, isn't it? From this amount, of, you know, it's not a huge amount of kit. No, we, we, we're, we're really happy, as you can imagine. Um, our current import tariff is about 35 pence a unit because we're on a commercial tariff still. Um, we're expecting that to drop a little bit now that the energy prices are starting to come through into the market, the, the drop. 
Um, so for every unit we can store in the battery and use that inside the building, then we're going to be saving that 35 pence a unit. Yeah. Now, the other thing, for your, you've got your granular detail on the panels there, and I'm sure everyone's desperate to know, those panels have been up there 12 years? Yeah. Was it 12 years? What does the system look like? Did you find anything untoward when you put in all those optimizers? We did, which I should be really disappointed about, but actually I'm quite pleased because it, it demonstrates the usefulness of having that module or panel level uh, monitoring on the systems. So what we found up there was that there was three modules that um, were giving much less power output, about 33% less output than the other modules that were next to them or even on the entire array. Uh, what we know is that those modules were built with three tracks on them. So three lines of, of, of tracks internal to the wiring of the modules. So we're fairly confident that one of those tracks in each of those modules has gone down, which is why we've got 66%-ish of those figures um, that we were, were expecting. Right, and because one module is down in the whole string, that would have affected the generation from the whole array on the roof. Yeah, that's right. It would have dragged down the, the generation um, to, to somewhere probably around about 70-80% for that whole string. Um, and then it would have uh, caused some stresses within the modules themselves because they're now trying to accommodate an amount of power through two tracks that normally would have gone through three tracks. Yeah, yeah but you'd be gutted if that happened in year one, Greg. Because that, all that, that money that, you've missed out on for should have been 11 years. I don't like to think about that. Being from Yorkshire, uh, I, I, let's not get into that conversation. <laughs> Yeah, um, but that, that's pretty, how else, without having the optimizers on there, that would have been pretty difficult to identify there was a fault on those individual modules. Yeah, so we, we would have just relied on the string by string data that we could pull off the old inverters, um, which if you remember were manufactured in about 2010 or 11. Um, and we really wouldn't have had any idea what was possibly module degradation as a whole. Yeah. So every module starts to produce less as time goes by or whether there is actually a fault on, on those modules. Yeah. So by having that module level optimization, it's worked really well for us. And what we've done now is we've actually geographically repositioned those on the roof, right. so that they're much closer to the edge of the roof, so that we can now, if we need to replace them when they properly fail, we can much easily erect a scaffold and get to them and just swap them out. Okay, but, so you, but you've still left them in, they're in the array, but because they've got the optimizers on, they're not dragging down the generation from the other, from the other panels. That's right, exactly. So it's the same um, uh, as the module level optimization. Even if they were to fail completely, it would just drop 235 watts um, out of the system. Actually, it would be two thirds of, of that, so about 80 watts out of the system uh, as a whole. And we're not too concerned about that. Um, it probably would have been more difficult to find a module that would have fitted on the same rail and bracket centers. Yeah. So we thought we'll just keep them up there for now. Uh, and if and when they fail, we might replace all three of them with two just so we keep the same amount of watt peak generation. Okay, and then obviously, yeah, because you've got optimizers, you don't have to worry about matching the panel currents and things like that. That's right, you've still got to match the, the optimizer to the new modules, yeah. um, but the, mod the optimizers that we've got fitted now will, will cover a huge range of modules, so we're fairly confident it would cover um, a module type that we'd be able to, to get hold of. Yeah. And the other big question we would try to answer, what do the performance of the panels look like? after being in, the ones that are still fully functioning, have you got any idea what the, what the performance of those looks like compared to Not that? fully yet. I mean, broadly speaking, we think they're, they're about where we'd expect them to be, maybe about 5% down, give or take. Um, but we really need a, a lot more data first before we can accurately tell whether that degradation was what the data sheet said it should have been back when we bought them. Yeah, and that's gonna be interesting. So a few learnings there for people, anyone who's got an old installation, probably should invest in a little bit of testing to make sure it's performing as, yeah. as was originally installed, because yeah. we could be, be missing out on some money. And uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing, uh, seeing what the degradation actually is as you, as you build up more data. And then people can probably ask, because you're coming on eFix TV. That's right, November first, the 1st. November the 1st. Um, you, obviously, I'm sure people have got lots of questions. You can either put them in the comments uh, or join in live on eFix TV. Uh, on the 1st of November. If you're tuning in in the future and we've already had that, it'll be in the video hanging around somewhere in this plant.